A loud, thunderous echo pulls me from my thoughts. A huge wooden door vibrates the sconces on the walls in its closing, knocking candles to the floor. I speak in an ominous tone. My guest of honor, you have finally come. I take it you met the inhabitants of my castle. I'm sure it was a warm welcome. Sitting on my throne, I stare at the spectacle before me at the bottom of the stairs. A man covered in blood. Someone who has been through battle. There is no doubt the guardians of my castle are now dead. I cannot see his face. A long black cloak drapes over his head and broad shoulders, covering the expensive clothing beneath. A black and red tunic trimmed with gold studs. A mirrored black belt lined with blood-soaked stakes. The shirt from the hips down drapes over black leather pants. They tuck into a set of tall buckled boots. Despite the dark color, its sheen reflects in the growing dawn. But it's not the color that makes my guest eccentric. It's the massive white cross on his chest that contrasts with everything. Clenched in his left hand is a strange looking contraption, a weapon with four straight blades extending from the center handle, the Bowaka blade. Its metal serrated edges drip with red liquid. I have seen it before during our laborious quarrels. My guest remains near the door, transfixed in silence, neither moving forward nor looking around. He's staring straight at me, staring at the smile on my face. I clap my hands as I slowly rise from my throne. I want to commemorate him for being the first person to make it through my abode, unscathed and intact. I am no longer bored, so I laugh. Welcome to my home, tenor Alvadine Wolfgang. The man says nothing as he draws back his hood, revealing his luscious golden locks falling around his shoulders. Such a pretty color. His crystal blue eyes are so menacing, so innocent. He is calm and collected, standing there across the room. He does not move. There is undeniable tension in the room, but it is neither him nor I who breaks it. There was a sudden breeze and the flapping of curtains. A terrible cry bellows from the shadows of the chamber. The voice is fierce with the intensity of a gale wind. You! Comes the breath of a woman as she lashes out at Wolfgang like a torrent of endless serpents. A dark mass ascends through the air with ferocity, striking with black hands and trailing smoke. Gathering clouds of mist take the shape of a hum of human with claws, long twisted nails large enough to skewer a horse. As I watch, there is no delay from Wolfgang. He moves with superb skill between shadow and light. For every blow the woman attacks with, he evades with precision. It lasts only a moment before she moves faster, avoiding approaching dawn's light. Like time standing still, the woman attacks faster than the human eye, but Wolfgang holds his own. She strikes at his abdomen and he buckles forward. She swipes at his head and he ducks. Every attack he parries or dodges. His evasions match the woman, both in skill and speed. She stops in mid-air suddenly. Wolfgang! You dare come to my home after what you've done? Such nerves you possess, such just honor! You shall pay for your crimes, human. Wolfgang unfastens his cloak and tosses it into the air behind him. His hand goes to one of the stakes on his belt, drawing it with great speed. With both hands, he forms two weapons into a cross. Stop this madness, Katrina, says Wolfgang, strong and resolute. I come in peace. There is an agreement between you, your father, and me. He glances over suddenly, as if expecting me to take action. But he has no idea. I am thoroughly entertained. Instead of... Instead, I drink from my goblet. I never stop grinning as the cold red liquid touches my lips. My fangs grow long and my face turns dark. Bastard, Wolfgang says in a curt manner. Katrina rushes forward, engulfing Wolfgang with her dark mist, slashing at him with demonic fury. 
Her hands dance, slicing flesh and spilling blood. I hear pain escaping his lips, but somehow he manages to remain standing. What heart! What resilience! Wolfgang retaliates with his blade, cutting at the mist. Every slice separates the smoke and Katrina laughs. She strikes at him over and over, driving Wolfgang into submission. Soon he is not moving at all. He's staring at something amidst the chaos. Katrina's speed increases, circling around him like a cyclone, a death whirlwind. She continues to spin around and around until she is merely a blur. Wolfgang doesn't move an inch. What is he doing? Then I realize he is waiting. Wolfgang thrusts his wooden stake forward, impaling Katrina. No warning, no anticipation. A loud cry escapes her lips. Her movement is held fast. The long stake is protruding from her heart. I see terror in Katrina's eyes, her pride, her glory. All of it is gone now. I hope you learned your lesson, my dearest Katrina. With a quick motion, Wolfgang severs her head. It falls to the floor and rolls the length of the stairs one bloody step at a time. Her body collapses into a heap of lifeless flesh. Wolfgang is breathing heavily. He looks up at me, yet I remain sitting on my throne. Poor soul, he is confused. I raise my hand in earnest. Before you accuse me of breaking my honor, know it well that I would never do such a thing. I have existed too long for such trivial nonsense. My daughter acted of her own will. Her fate was her choosing, and she chose non-compliance. Wolfgang looks around the room. Non-compliance? Yes, my guest. Non-compliance. You should learn it well. When the need to kill becomes too great, the will becomes compromised. The blood, lu the blood lust renders the conscious beast useless. Even I, her maker, could not subdue the urges she had for you. Her anger, built over time, over you killing her brother, transgressed well beyond reason. It was only a matter of time before she snapped. The curse always wins in the end. My deepest apologies. I'm not sure I believe you, says Wolfgang, holding his weapon close. Clearly. With the light of the sun filling the chamber, my power is waning. It gleams off my skin as if any moment my skin would catch fire and evaporate. Wolfgang watches me intently. I see the rumors are true. You can walk in the daylight. With pride, I grunt, as if he needed proof. There is no other who can. My eyes begin to flutter. The sun is draining me considerably. I need more blood if I'm going to continue this conversation. I believe a, con a congratulations is in order, I say, tapping the arm of my chair with dried fingernails. Wolfgang eyes me suspiciously. What, for killing your daughter? I can't help but laugh. Hardly not. Come. I motion with my hand and stand up. A toast. I make my way to the table where I have poured countless goblets of blood. There is a wine bottle set out for Wolfgang, too. I am always prepared for the occasion. Wolfgang smirks. A toast to your demise? To life, I say, raising my goblet. Oh, he's so cunning. I drink it all damn down and slam my goblet onto the table. I hear you and the lovely Diana recently gave birth to a son. A joyous occasion, no doubt. What do you know of joy, monster? You only know of death and decay. My family is not your concern. No, I say with an air of being distraught. I was hoping to visit you one day, once all of this is behind us. Wolfgang slowly takes a few steps toward me. Understand this, Iglesian. No matter what God has in store for you, you will never set foot near my family. As soon as this is over, you are leaving the realm 
and never coming back. I smile. Well then, seems the formalities are over with. I gesture with my hand. Shall we proceed? Wolfgang nods. Good. To the matter at hand, then. The relic, if you would. Bracing the wooden surface with my arms, I lean forward, holding back my excitement. I have waited for this too for so long, and now here is the man who hated me the most, deliver me the very thing I wanted most. Wolfgang takes a few steps forward and stops. His crystal blue eyes sparkle in the sunlight. For two thousand years, You've reigned supreme lord over your kind. For centuries you oppressed the people of Roland, brought death and suffering into the hearts. We have fought hand to hand, tooth and nail, and lost the ones we love. I gladly give you this relic. Wolfgang reaches behind his back and produces an object wrapped in brown cloth. As he removes the fabric, my blood begins to pump feverishly. It is the size of two closed fists side by side, with two metal bars bound together by sharp barbed wire. Shafts of light glint from its metallic surface. Its presence is unnerving. I want to run from it as far and fast as I can, but I subdue the urges. This is not what I expected. Wolfgang holds it before him like fragile glass. The hand of God. My eyes are locked on the relic. What do you know of suffering? I snap, looking into his eyes suddenly. I am the only one who knows true suffering, and it will come to an end. I cast immortality to the dogs of hell. They can have it, for I seek new life. To be human again, I shed my everlasting curse. Extending my hand, I beckon the hand of God to me. It flies into my pale hand unchallenged. Its surface is vibrant and warm to the touch. Its energy seeps through my skin and spreads through my body, bathing me in white light. The sensation is unlike anything I've ever felt before. It is terrifying and wonderful all the same. I grab it with my other hand and pull it close to my chest. Yes, life, I accept you. It pours into my veins, which accept agony, accept the woes of man, accept pain, accept emotion, accepting all these things. It is all there. Existence. The breath in my lungs is hot. The air is salty. It is all around me. Looking at my hands, I see they are no longer pale blue, but rosy pink, rushing with the living blood. The veins throbbing underneath my skin bulge with certainty. My hair is thick and my skin is moist. I am suddenly very aware of my surroundings in a way I was destined to forget over 2,000 years. Yes, I am alive. I am rejuvenated and I am mortal. Looking up, Wolfgang is staring at me. Surprise and disbelief riddle his face carries the visage of absolute denial. I am changed and I am immediately aware of my absent powers I once commanded. I attempt to call the fire, the shadow, but it doesn't come. I take a deep breath and exhale. It does not matter. I am free of my earthbound prison and now death is a force to reckon with. And so it happens. Before I take my first step, before I speak my first word, my body is stuck, is struck with a heavy weight. I was certain I'd have more time, but it comes without warning, an unbearable crushing force, pushing the air from my lungs and compressing my head in agonizing pain. I do not recall ever feeling pain like this before. I try to move, but it's useless. I see Wolfgang slowly stepping away from me, hand on his weapon. A cautious look betrays his face. He is terrified of me. Then the memories begin consuming me, one by one. All the murders I committed, all the sacrifices I've gone through with, 
They rip at my skin and crush my bones. The sentries catch up to me. Screams of children wail in my ear. God's punishment, yet I do not bend. My body dwindles away to nothing. Raising my arms, I watch the flakes of my skin peel away and the muscles uncoil from my bones. Soon I am merely a skeletal frame with the consciousness of a man. In the next few moments, I will become dust. This is not the end. I look upon Wolfgang one last time and smile.